Robert here. I'm the owner of Forever Fit, and I'm here today to talk to you about probably the three biggest factors, which is the reason why you constantly are yo-yoing. The, the three factors that if you don't nail these things down, you'll constantly be struggling with, with keeping on body fat, not gaining muscle, having a lack of energy. Um, these three factors are deal breakers, okay? These are game changers. And when I break this down for you, you'll really clearly see exactly why you've, you, you haven't gotten to where you want to be. I mean, let's face it, right? Um, constantly, one of the, I mean, one of the biggest industries right now is the fitness and fat loss industry. And why is that? Because people don't have these three things nailed down, okay? Let's jump right into it. First thing is getting clear, okay? And when I talk about getting clear, what I mean is getting clear with exactly what you are capable of doing, what you currently are, are you know, what, what is your current state, and then in addition to that, how much change are you willing to go through? How much change can you truly, can you truly do? All right, so let's jump into this a little bit. So when it comes to getting clear, the first thing you need to get clear about is what do I want, okay? You got to get clear with the what, okay? Once we figure out the what, then we can move on to phase two. So let's use uh, one person as a case, case study, okay? I'm going to call this person, let's call this person Jerry, okay? So Jerry is a, Jerry's a female. This female is 37 years old, and uh, she currently struggles with abdominal fat, okay? She really, really doesn't like the way how her waist is. She's got this, you know, mommy pooch that she just can't get rid of. So let's say that you are Jerry, all right? We already figured out the what. The what is, what is it? It's ab flab, right? It is, um, I don't know, is it metabolism? We want to say uh, 37. Let's do a question mark by that, metabolism. Right, she thinks that she has a sluggish metabolism and that's, and that's the problem. All right, and then now let's also figure out, okay, what is she willing to go through in order to get rid of that ab flab? Okay, what is she willing to do to, to conquer being 37, not having the, not having the, the bounce back <laughs> uh, metabolism of a 17 year old, and also uh, maybe she's had a couple of kids. All right, so right now maybe she has about four hours a week that she could dedicate to fitness, health, exercise, all that, okay? Um, now, the second component we're going to talk about is going to be hormones. So hormones run the show, point blank. Hormones will make or break you, okay? Hormones will be what exactly, what exactly um, is causing it to where she has ab flab and not, not butt flab, okay? Not inner thigh flab, things like that. It's not just the fact that she doesn't work her abs. It's because of hormones, okay? Hormones. Let's, let's underline that. Let's do like a big, crazy... You know, let's let's go another step. Let's do a red one, too. All right. Hormones. OK, um, there's a reason why a lot of different a lot of different actors and stars and bodybuilders and all that like to buy, um, buy like to buy synthetic hormones because they know that if they change hormones, they could change this. They could change that. OK, now <laughs> the next thing we need to look at is going to be consistency. OK, what can she consistently do in order to change this? to change that. So if she can't consistently buy T3 and T4, okay, artificial thyroid hormone, uh, maybe she shouldn't start doing that because that means that she's going to get back to this and it's probably going to even be worse because now we've got more of an issue with this after we've, after we've um, externally brought that into the equation. Uh, your body's going to start to produce less of it on its own and it takes years, if it does fully bounce back, to his full capacity. So we gotta remember about the consistency. All right, can we consistently do that? If she knows she can consistently work out four days a week, she knows that she needs to get rid of her ab flap, she knows that she's struggling with the metabolism, so what do we need to do? We need something that's going to boost the metabolism. We know that it, it, it's gonna have to help to combat the ab flap. Let's say I did mention also that she's a mom, maybe it's something that's not gonna take up a whole lot of time. All right, so now we get to get into um, now we get to get into that next phase, okay? What approach is she going to take? There's numerous different ways how you can go about this. There's numerous different, uh, I mean, right now I'm going to focus more on the nutrition because most of the experts will say 60% of any fitness or health goal 
is nutrition. All right, some go as far as 80%. I don't quite believe in that myself. Um, I believe in the gurus that think it's about 60%. With that being said, there's, you can't really see this chart, but there's numerous things that are accepted and are very famous and, um, and healthy ways to go about her losing her ab flab, all right? But as we go into those things, we have to remember what can we con consistently do 80% of the time, okay? 80% rule. So let's go ahead and start diving into some of these different things. All right, we'll keep the what there, but we'll start diving into some of these. So the first one that we're going to hop on into, this is probably one that everybody, you know, they're like, oh, Robert, what do you think about this? Robert, what do you think about that? Okay, paleo. All right, so paleo, let's go, let's dive right into the core principles of this. The core principle of this is going to be wheat-free. Um, it's also going to be dairy-free. Um, it's also going to be without beans, okay? Um, some paleos say no soy as well. <clears throat> when we're diving into paleo, we have to remember, now what kind of demands is that going to put on her? Okay, what kind of demands does that put on you? That means if she is pressed for time and she already has a hard enough time cooking, cooking meals for her kids, why in the heck would she do paleo, which is going to make her have to cook more if she doesn't have time to even cook for her own kids, okay? She's got to cook for them and cook for her because there's going to be a lot of friction, and I don't know if she's ready for that amount of friction that would actually go down if she tried to make her kids eat paleo, all right? Some people go with it, some not. It depends on the age of your kids. We can get into that maybe on a whole nother time, all right? But... When we're looking at that, we've got to remember, okay, look, does she have time to actually do this? If the answer is no, don't even try it. Don't even get into it. Because here's the thing. Let's say she loses 20 pounds from going paleo, all right? She's like, oh, my gosh, 20 pounds. The ab flab is gone. I'm feeling great, feeling awesome, okay? She starts to ease back into her old patterns. If she doesn't follow that 80% rule, she's going to get it back. And she's probably going to get it back worse. Not only that, let's not forget... Our body is all about adaptation, okay? So once we adapt it to one type of a way of eating, if we go deviate away from that 30%, even 40%, and we start eating cheese, you know, three times a week, and we start, um, you know, having grains a couple days a week, I mean, if we start really easing back into it, she's going to ease back into this, all right? So we've got to figure out what we can do 80% of the time. Next thing here, let's go over the whole organic, all right? Let's go with the whole organic. Slash natural, okay? Okay, I don't know who the heck started this. But, let's see, okay. Let me not be too mean on, um, on whoever started this whole, eat organic, you're going to lose weight. Eat natural, you're going to be lean and mean. This is crap, all right? This is total crap, all right? Just because you have organic crackers doesn't mean that you're going to lose belly flat from eating organic crackers. Because you know what? The organic crackers are, I don't know, let's say it's 140 calories a serving. Let's say it is uh, 30 grams of carbohydrates. All those carbohydrates are refined and processed. Uh, your body is still going to treat those pretty much the same as it's going to treat those Ritz crackers, saltines, whatever the heck else you're doing. All right, so, so let's get that portion out of the head. All right, let's get into what is the science behind this, okay? Because behind every lie is some amount of truth. Okay? Science. Is there science behind it? The science behind it is this. When it comes to your meats, okay, your meats in particular, and then also with some of your vegetables, there are some things that will make your body more apt to actually store, <laughs> to actually store body fat, um, to actually hold on to things. And when we get into things like growth hormone, we get into um, um, a lot of different uh, antibiotics and so on and so forth. We're getting into really controversial stuff here, but, you know, I'm here to deliver you guys the truth, okay? Really, really get into, really get into that portion of it. What's actually proven? What's actually backed? I mean, I've been a diet and nutrition coach for the past uh, seven years now, okay? My, my major's in kinesiology and dietetics because I knew that the combination of the two is what it's going to actually take in order to get real results, um, there's no way I would have lost over 105 pounds if I didn't have both of those things intact. And if I didn't go about it scientifically, I knew that I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't actually get sustainable results. I needed to make sure that whatever I was going to do was not only going to be 
um, you know, help me to lose weight, but also healthy as well, okay? So when we get into the science of this, uh, let's just go, let's just attack um, red meat, for example, okay? When we get into the beef, you can do your own research on this, but essentially the amounts of growth hormones and things like that that are instilled into the cow, you will inadvertently eat that, okay? So if your goal is not to get bigger, maybe you shouldn't eat growth hormone. All right, <laughs> with that being said, moving on, okay? Um, getting now into the eggs, getting into the chicken, there's not very much scientific data backing that natural or organic eggs and chicken breasts is gonna help you in losing weight or help you in maintaining healthy weight versus the, con versus the uh, conventional stuff, okay? So using this to lose weight, not a great idea. Making a couple of choices, all right, based around science to make sure that you're healthier, that is a good idea. But I would say if you don't have the, if you don't have the funds to get organic grass-fed beef, maybe stay away from beef. When it comes to the chicken and it comes to the eggs, make sure that you are, make sure that you're actually instilling practices that's going to make it so that, um, make it so that you are, you're watching your portions, okay? You're actually making better choices. And a little tip here on the organic and natural, if you go to the market, okay, on Saturdays, all organic and natural foods, 25% off, okay? So that's the time to get into it. If you look at the average price hike of those foods, it's about 30%. So if I'm able to uh, get 25% off, I might be paying 5% more. And that's the average. So some things are considerably higher, some things are considerably lower, all right? Um, but that's a great thing to do, okay? Market, grocery store on Lakeway, go there on Saturdays, stock up for the week, you're good to go, okay? Now, I'm not gonna go through every single thing, but, um, but I at least wanna give you guys a good rounding so that you can know where to move forward, where to research more. Um, you're also gonna have little templates and stuff that I'm gonna put at the bottom of here, you know, some sample meal plans and things like that, um, so that you can get an idea of, of what this would actually look like, okay? What does Paleo look like? Um, I'll give you some links to some websites and so on for recipes and, and uh, you know, give you more, more data behind that. Next thing, okay, we're going to go into the fast food diet, right? Fast food diet. Okay, so fast food diet, this is probably the first one that actually for, for, uh, for Terry here, let me give her a name. Don't ask me why I picked that name. I think it's because it was actually the only name I could think of where I don't currently have a client in my program named Terry. So that way you guys couldn't try to pinpoint and say, oh yeah, I know that gal. Okay, so, so anyway, so for Terry, since she has AvFlab, all right, she's 37, she's a mom. Let's add that in here. Okay, mom, say mom of two, and she is busy. Let's underline that, okay? She's busy, right? The fast food diet might work out well for her. What is the fast food diet? I've seen versions of this throughout the years. Um, the best that I can actually gear you towards, and this, this stuff actually works, okay? I lost my first, I don't know, 70 pounds eating fast food one to two times a day, all right? <clears throat> so, uh, da -da 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 -da. eat this. This, not that. Okay, let's get into the science of this. All right, why does this work? This focuses on calories in. Sorry that my handwriting is horrible. It's horrendous. Um, but I want to try to make it so that you can kind of see. All right, because it focuses on calories in versus calories out, okay? I didn't even put in. I just said calories and calories out. Okay, calories in versus calories out. If you guys can notice, I'm not really teaching. Way more of a nutritional coach and trainer. But anyway, that's what it's based around, okay? For years, we have believed that this is, this is the truth, okay? This is, this is where it's at when it comes to losing weight, and in all honesty, this is a huge truth of it. In fact, I'll go out to say this is it. Okay, this is it. What I'm going to say, though, might sound contradictory, but you have to listen really closely to understand where I'm coming from with this. Calories in versus calories out, very true, okay? 
the first thing, though, that we have to remember, calories in, okay? So, like, let's say we're looking at the fast food diet. All right, we got our calories in. Let, uh, let's say this is one of those eat this, not that thing. Let's say I've got my Egg McMuffin. All right. McMuffin. Okay. I got my Egg McMuffin in the morning here. We're looking at about a 250, two, yeah, 250 calories. Don't quote me to this to the T, but let's say we got that. Um, let's see here. Yeah, so we got that going. Lunch. Okay, let's say for lunch here we got Subway. This was like what I used to do, by the way. Anyway, so Subway, six inch. With double meat, I used to rock it that way, okay? The, um, the, uh, the six inch of roasted chicken with about 400, 450 cows, okay? And that's with light mayo. Dinner, let's say dinner, we are, let's say we're finally not doing fast food, but we're doing Hagen, okay? We're doing Hagen, we got the baked chicken. There we go. Baked chicken, let's say we went with a breast. We got about 180, no, sorry, about 200 calories. All right. And then we also did, uh, let's say we did green beans with that. About 50. Let's say we did mac. Mac and cheese with that as well. Okay. We're looking about uh, 350. So let's do the math here. 350, 400, 600. Okay. 1,050. Where are we at here, folks? 1,050, 1,300. I had to think about that. <laughs> okay, so we got 1,300 calories here. One, three, zero, zero. All right, 1,300 calories with that. I don't know if you can see that. I hope you can. Um, but anyway, I said 1,300 calories was the total there for that day. That's not including any snacks. Usually I might throw in protein shakes and things like that in between. Um, but essentially with this type of eating... I don't have to cook a thing. Will I lose weight? Heck yeah, I will. I would definitely lose weight with that, okay? Um, will I be satisfied? No. I was freaking hungry all day, okay? The amount of hunger that I had, it literally felt like suffering, okay? It felt like suffering. And, um, and later on, as I look at the nutritional value of those things, and I look at the way how the foods were composed and so on, I was actually robbing my body of nutrients. Because later on, when I went into kind of a um, kind of a paleo thing, more, more, actually more of a um, more of a um, elimination diet where I cut out everything, I figured out that wheat is not my friend, and so is not dairy. Okay, so the fact that I had wheat at one, two, three times a day, I had dairy one, two, three times a day. No wonder I felt starving all the time because I was constantly malnourished. All right. So this this way of eating here, pretty miserable. Was it effective at losing pounds? Yes. I lost weight. I lost weight at a very rapid rate. OK. Um, but on the weekends, I'll go hog wild, usually on these fast foods, because there's so much MSG and things like that to make me constantly crave them that now I wanted even more of them. OK. And when I was allowed to eat more and I had my cheat day, I went all out on those cheat days, okay? I still struggle with this whole fast food thing because, honestly, it's so freaking addictive, okay? Between the sodium, the MSG, all that stuff. But when we talk about busy, we talk about metabolism and all that, this is not a bad place to start because something is way better than nothing. And let's not forget the 80% rule. If I know that, hey, once I lose my weight, let's say maybe I could swap out, I don't know, maybe I could swap out like one of these things here, Maybe I could do, you know, do like a smoothie or something. I don't know, do some eggs, cook them at home or what have you. But these two here, I'm still staying pretty close on par, okay, with how I lost it. But now if I start adding in all these different, all these different things, like maybe I want to start doing um, a completely different type of a food plan, you know, maybe, maybe something that's higher carbs or higher protein than this, then it's going to be hard for my body to process the higher amount of protein or higher amount of carbohydrates since I'm pretty much going on a lower side of the fats, I won't be able to handle it very well, okay? So, so now moving on to the next one. We got the Mediterranean diet. Mediterranean diet. In fact, you know what? Let's hop, let's hop past that one. Let's go right to the abs diet. 
Uh-oh. Okay, so abs diet. You probably have heard about this. Once again, I'll reference a little bit, um, like send you a link or something like that so you can actually look more into the abs diet. But her being a busy mom, doing the abs diet won't work out too well, okay? Let me give you the short and skinny of the abs diet. We're looking at definitely whole foods. We're looking at not eating starches and carbohydrates past a certain time of day. We're also looking at lots of healthy fats. We're looking at lots of, um, lots of lean meats and things like that. Things that she's going to have to cook, all right? Um, she might be able to get away with the chicken, the rotisserie chicken from Hagen's. But other than that, she's going to have to cook. She's going to have to prepare. She's going to have to do a lot of planning. And in reality, she might be able to hold that down for three, four weeks once she starts to see her waist move. Once she slips up on that, once she starts eating, let's say she starts eating pasta at dinner, that's going to throw this out of the window, okay? She, she's going to end up seeing that ab flat back so quick, she won't even, like her head's going to spin, okay? So pay attention to what you can sustain. If you love chicken stir fry, if you love, you know, steak and asparagus, steak and broccoli, things like that for dinner, abs diet might be a great way for you to go. Um, so would paleo, okay? So would uh, the Mediterranean diet. Um, there's a number of things, okay? The elimination diet, um, low carb versus low starch, that will work out well. Um, the Asia study might be good. Um, you get the idea. A lot of the emerging stuff would probably work for you um, if you're okay with doing that. Now, that's going to bring me to my next point. Essentially, there's a certain trend that happens when most of the things that have stuck and that have been the most, the most, uh, the most successful. All right, let's let's bring these up here again. We got paleo.